next big thing to do is uh, set up some air conditioning so that we don't freeze in the cockpit. And it's probably a good idea to close the window before we start the heat. Before we get air pressure we need the APU on. And to do that, we come down to the bottom of the uh, left hand side of the engineer's panel and switch these two switches up. Waiting for the lights to come on. So the car is powered and ready. So we switch it on. These lights will come on yellow. And you'll notice the two power units start. The solar power unit is now on. First thing we need to do is connect it to the air system, which is over here. And we hold this in the up position until the third light down turns off. If it takes a good seven multiseconds. Up the top now we switch the solar power unit's power source on and switch this over to the solar power unit. So the power is now ready to take the power. As you can see, I've turned the external power unit off. There's still power connected here. And the uh, crew has uh, told it, the ground crew, to disconnect the external power. And now we need to start the air conditioning, so we come up to the quick spot on the top. Which will open up this window. And we set this switch to the top. Working our way down, we switch these up to 21 degrees or so, something nice and comfortable. All these systems to automatic, which is the top position. This to about minus 10, these two to automatic, uncage and to the top, over to the same indication as this switch, as that switch, uncage these, and before we make the next move we need to double check that the doors are closed. So at the top here. Open this panel, confirm that all of these lights are out, which they are. I'm going to turn on the fire alarm switches and confirm that they're running. Set this power system to the auxiliary power unit and then shut the window. Back to here. We're now going to charge the uh, pressurization system a little bit. Hold this into the up position until this drops to about minus three. On that. Once that happens you let that go. Now this will start to build up. In the meantime we've got a couple of seconds to do other things. One thing I'm going to do now is turn on this switch which shows how much fuel is in the tanks. Set the system to show how much fuel we've actually got on board. So in this case, it's about 15. That's with the scroll wheel on that position. Switch on these three. They're the engine indicating instruments. And now we are on our way to starting the engines. Firstly, we need to charge the brake, emergency brake system which due to this red light being activated is obviously offline. Firstly we will check over here. The silly power unit is under 5, which means that we are good to go for this. Open the page to the top. These two positions on. Up here we will look at the silly power unit and see that the loading has gone up to about 9 or so. We want to keep that under 10. If we were to start the fuel pumps at this stage, we would actually probably blow out the sleep unit. 
it's electricity generation. I'm going to press this button to charge the emergency brake system. It's charged by these two systems which pump hydraulic pressure across to the braking system and as you press them they will come down. They'll meet about there. If you hold that down it won't actually continue to rise. What you need to do is relieve the pressure on these primary systems. Once that is done you can continue with the second press of the button and the lights will go out. Once that is done you just check that these are all stable and you turn the system back off. Come back up to the utility car unit and you can see that the loading has dropped back to 4. The pressurisation system is back to stable position again. Down here we can see that uh, these systems are set to about 3, about 2 actually. I want to uh, charge that up a little bit more to about 4, which is that little mark just above 3. So push it up to the top, making sure that this doesn't go above 3. You can see it's starting to relieve itself a little bit easier. Down here you can see it working its way up as we press the button in. Take a few presses and that's where I want it. Confirm that the system has relieved itself, it's almost there. Once that's done, we're ready to start the engines. To start the engines we need fuel. And to have fuel we need to make sure that we have enough electricity for the fuel pumps to run. So we'll check over here, make sure that that's not above 5. And with that done, we'll set these systems on. First, the centre tanks, all four. We can have a look at the um, power unit and we can see that's now about six. Down here, I'm going to switch these systems on. And the uh, final step is to switch the automatic pumping system on, which will cause these fuel pumps to run. Let's select their tanks on. There's no fuel on that pump so there's no reason to turn this tank's fuel pumps on. Coming back over the auxiliary power unit, we can see that we've got about 8 amps on the auxiliary power bus. This is uh, about 3 or 4 under its maximum. I'm going to open up these cages, all three, in preparation, and set the uh, fuel levers to forward. I'm now prepared for engine start. To start the engines, we'll come up here, back into the pressurization and engine start panel, and open the engine start panel itself, which is here, click spots along its um, back region, and you have to right click that, which will open up. Well, here you can see that we've got no air going into the engines at this stage. We need to open up this system and then uh, the ground control will confirm that it will be ready for start. See that moving up? We're now ready for engine to start. We we'll select our first engine, engine number one in this case. Come down on this button here. Light should come on. This light is now on. We wait for this light to come off. Once that has happened, we come down here, introduce fuel. Confirm that your uh, engine is spooling up with increasing exhaust gas temperature. EGT should peak a little bit under the 6. It's fairly cold day today, so it's probably going to be under 5. And once the engine is stabilised, we'll come back down and close the hatch. Back to the engine start panel. 
select a new engine, start the sequence, and same for the next engine.